Hi, this is Naomi with Sword and Steel, and today I'd like you to join me in some painting. Today I'm going to be painting up my sulfur hounds. A unit of three, though, uh, for the painting, I'm going to be focusing on the alpha of the sulfur hounds, but at the end of the video, you'll be able to see all of them. After coating the miniatures with gloss black primer by Vallejo, I also used Vallejo's Dura Aluminum Metal Color Airbrush. And I only did one layer, more in a up, pointing down fashion, so that underneath it would be darker than up above. Just a very, very slight zental highlighting on the metal, without having to do any work at all. Once that had dried, I applied brown earth earth texture from Vallejo all over the base, very simply, with half a popsicle stick. So this is his stage. In some cases, I leave the base until later, but I already know the color scheme, so I want to use that, uh, the base color, to help me decide any of the little details that I haven't figured out yet. But first, let's get down the main colors. One, metal check. Uh, next is going to be the red of the Mephiston, Mephiston red on all of his armor platings and then will be uh, Mechanicus standard gray just using the air version so I don't have to uh, bother with um, watering it down faster. And as well as his cloak and the pants and whatnot of the puppy dog are going to be German gray. Where are you? There you are. Are going to be a German gray by Veho as well. And I've got some various metals for little bits and bobs to give him a bit more color after that, as well as his um, his power source. Any of his glowy power sources are all going to be a glowy green. Uh, generally, for generally, I've been just using a metallic green for that, but I might ump it up a bit on camera. Hmm. Uh, I might highlight a bit on camera uh, for the regular troops, though. I'll show you how much I work on. Uh, how much painting I go into on the regular troops, and then maybe because these are my puppy dogs, we'll do a little bit extra. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Now, another thing that I want to make that y'all are aware of is the paint brushes that I'm using. The paint brushes that I'm using were given to me to test out and show to you by Emil from Squidmire Miniatures. <laughs> now it took a while to actually get them to me because of, you know, isolation and all that and trouble with the mail, uh, but they arrived and it did, I, I made, I was like, oh my gosh, oh thanks, I, but now I have to figure out what, what models I should be using these with because you may not use contrast paint um, on these. Uh, with these brushes, because the contrast paint will destroy them, uh, Emil from Scootermire Miniatures made certain to warn me that there are dire consequences to using contrast paints on these brushes, so I shan't be doing it, but this color scheme that I'm using on my, um, on my Admech don't use contrast paints, so these will work perfectly. Um, he can tell you a lot more about them if you want to know the specifics. I'll add the video of his um, explaining them uh, down in the description below. Alright, wet palette ready to go. Yes, it's wet enough. Used it yesterday and it is still nice and wet. If you're wondering how the Army Painter palette uh, works, about a year. Been, I've been using it for about a year. I very much enjoy it. Yes, you see stains underneath, but they're just stains. And I use the inside cover 
um, as a dry palette, so you can do that too. Okay, so firstly we want to do Mephiston Red. I'm choosing the large, yes, large squid wire for this. This one is a thicker paint. It's going on the wet palette. And just adding a very small touch of water to it. The Mephiston Red has a great coverage and a very smooth consistency. Mm -hmm. Right, so I'm not going to be um, being too careful about this uh, because I'm going to be applying a metal trim and the metal uh, goes over the red really well, so allows me to not have to worry too much about if I draw outside of the lines. So this Mephist on Red is really good to cover up, but I will be doing two coats of this. And I, thankfully my wet palette will keep the Mephist on Red uh, nice and fresh for me while the first layer dries, and I go on to do the second layer. Normally I would have my nose in on this painting job, but to keep it in camera requires me to paint from a distance that I don't normally paint from. I really like the, the uh, contrast between the Mephiston Red and this Duraluvnum. Uh, I think they both complement each other well and bring out each other's brightness. Stygies 8 being a planet who, uh, a forge world who likes to dress up as Mars. Uh, ad admech because <laughs> they're not trusted very much because apparently they like to deal with alien technology and that is against the rules. Now this helmet is one that I created. The original helmet kind of looked like it was backwards so I switched it around and uh, and made this one which I focus focus thank you uh, and I much prefer it. If you're wondering how I did it, you can always look at the video. Uh, I guess I'll put the assembly video of these guys uh, down in the description. I need to go a lot closer to look at what I'm doing here. While this guy is drying from the red, which won't take long at all, I'm going to go ahead and do the grey, Mechanicus Standard Grey. Now I'm just choosing an airbrush uh, Mechanicus Standard Grey and because it's more liquidy, shaky paint. Uh, because it's more liquidy I am not putting it on the wet palette because I do not want it that wet. I'm going to put it on the dry palette. There's not much to do in this color, so though it will dry out faster, should be fine. Still using this big old brush because its point, its point is very nice. A little bit of a extra point there, but hmm. And what I'm doing, Mechanicus Standard Grey, is his pants. That's it. Just his pants. And the bottom half of him doesn't have any legs, so... It's not actually much to paint. I'll do two layers of that as well, if it's needed. Just getting in there where I can see 
Maybe. So I can do it on film properly. Maybe I should get a magnifying glass. Magnifying glasses are always nice. The next step is the German Grey. <laughs> that one is a thicker paint, so it gets, it gets the wet palette. Bum, 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 bum. And it is going to go on his cloak. It's going to be like he has a rubber kind of cloak. And it's also going to go on the loyal steed right here. This definitely looked like it was some kind of fabric. So it's going rubber. And the back of his cloak. The back of his cloak is going to go rubber. The inside, inner part of his cloak is going to uh, be Rakarth, Rakarth flesh. But the back of it is going rubber or German gray. And yeah, the front part of the puppy as well. Mm, this part here will go rubber as well. Now let me just take it up to my face so I can actually see what I'm doing. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, bum, bum. I paint for the final piece, which means I may miss certain sections if it's underneath and doesn't look bizarre. I'm not gonna paint it. Whenever something is in shadow, it's much less defined than when it's in bright light. So if I don't if I don't define the shadows, that adds to the realism. Not it doesn't take away from it. I'm also doing all the sleeves. in this German grey. And his, um, what would you call that? Bandana? Whatever this part is. This cowboy bandana. This part. Next, I'm going to actually do the second. Yeah, I'm going to do the second layer of the Mephiston Red because I do want to get that layer on before I switch over to uh, gold. I'm going to trim that red with gold and it shall be glorious. Glorious, I tell you. Ooh, I just love this red. Oh yes, look how vibrant. Yes. I must say though, there is a really vibrant engine, fire engine red, a spray by um, the Army Painter. And uh, that would probably work really nicely if you wanted to make us um, a fist on red spray and you didn't have one because um, they, don't, they don't make it anymore. But that, f that pure red spray by Army Painter Really easy to use. Uh, coat's really lovely. It's nice. Um, I have a video uh, where you see it as Army Painter dry brush video, and it looked very striking. Mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. Now I need retributor armor. That is what I am coloring. Retributor armor looks more orangey in the bottle than it will be as a highlight. It's a softer gold um, once you put it in small, 
thin strokes on a miniature. I'm putting it on the white palette. I do not have a lot of time before the wet palette makes it too thin to use. I still put it on the wet palette because this, despite that, um, I still get more time out of it, that amount, if I put it on the wet palette than if I put it on a dry palette. Right, second paintbrush of the day will be the Squidmire Mach 1 small size. Dampening it down and getting ready for some, making certain my point is still lovely. And I'm going to be doing edge highlighting, which means I'm not going to be using the tip of, oh, let me just get that in view. I'm not going to be using the tip of this brush. I'm going to be using the side of it. And I really want the Retribute Armor to be wet, but not too wet, uh, because for edge highlighting you need a nice a flowing paint with so that you can touch it very slightly and it will flow. If it takes any effort, focus, focus, if it takes any effort for that paint to come off your brush, uh, then your paint is not ready for edge highlighting. Thin it down or find a more opaque pa paint. Uh, your paint could be not, could be too transparent for good edge highlighting. So you either have to add something to it to make it more opaque, which can be done, um, or you just need to find another paint. For edge highlighting, you want a nice opaque paint that smoothly flows. Otherwise, you're just you're you're just making yourself live a difficult life without me. focused good. I very much enjoy the fact that I um, base this with duraluminum because even if I don't do the like best job um, with this highlighting or these, this edge highlighting because it's so small I can, it'll still have like a shine to it because Duraluminum is very shiny. I'm uh, only going to be doing this edge highlighting once. Why? Because Retributa Armor is really good at covering and I don't really need to do it more than once. Now, if there are si there are going to be situations on your miniature where you can't edge highlight, um, your paintbrush just won't move that way because it's a stick with hair at the end and it has its limits. So if you're not edge highlighting, then you have to s steady this hand and then they steady this hand with this hand and very carefully, now it's a tip of your brush and you definitely want a brush that can do both if you're going to edge highlight because you don't want to slow yourself down. Now you use the tip. And again, you want that paint to flow and you want a, the finest little deep end. Now, Emil from Squidmire Miniatures is very particular about his paintbrushes. He wants one that works well, which serves me really well because it's it uh, allows me to have paint in my paintbrush without it drying out particularly fast. 
It's one of the features you want to do in this paintbrush, and it seems to be working. Of course, I also have my more tribunal armor on a wet palette, which helps as well. Yeah. So everywhere that I have that red, um, as it can be, it will be edge highlighted with gold. This is a task that you can't do fast. Um, thankfully, the Mephiston Red is also a very opaque paint. Uh, as is the German Grey, so if I accidentally make a mess with my edge highlighting, I can immediately wash out my brush, grab my Mephiston Red, and cover it up. Like that, for example. I'm not even going to wait for it to dry. It's such a small amount of paint that it's basically dry anyway. So if I make a little mistake, rather than trying to find it when I'm done, I'm going to instead fix it on the spot. And that's the other great thing about the wet palette. All my other base colors that need that I need to fix any mistakes are still fresh for me to use. Just speeds up painting and wastes less paint. Now that, that is all done. It is time to apply uh, Rackarth flesh to the inner part of his robes. Do -do 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 -do. As you can see on my little vanguard, we have Rackarth flesh right there. Rubber on the outside, Rackarth flesh there. However, uh, it seems like I ran out of Rackarth flesh and I don't have an extra bottle here, so I'm, I'm just going to make it. I will use the bigger brush for the mix. And I'm going to make a Rackarth flesh. You don't have to go through this trouble. Because you just have to pick up Rackarth flesh. But I want to get this done <laughs> without. So I'm going to attempt to make Rackarth flesh out of storm vermin fur and Bushtabi bone. That's close enough. And if it isn't, I can go over it again. So, storm vermin fur, bush dobby bone, combined together, I'll make something that looks like Rackarth flesh, and then I'll probably just grab my Rackarth flesh later. Looks like we're gonna need to do multiple layers of this. That's the only spot that I put the Rackarth flesh. <laughs> That's it. And all right, now for his little saddle bags on the back, I think I will use a leather brown. Um, let's see what color that is. Maybe with a tinge of red. So leather brown with <laughs> XV88. not the color I'm looking for. Fine. Another brown with a bit of um, Evil Sun Scarlet. So much mixing. a little bit too red for what I was going for. 
Alright. A reddish XB88. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. And just over his little saddlebags. Zoom in for that. One pair of saddlebags drying. And the others. Now, grab my small, small squid wire, and fix up a spot that I seem to have missed. Now I'm going to put little bits and bites, little colorings somewhere. Ah, right. Um, I want a brown, brown bronze of some kind. I want copper. What do I want? Balthazar gold. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's go Balthazar Gold for just to change up the metal, um, the silver metal with a different metal. All right, grab the big one. And Balthazar Gold is also a. Th oh, it's not too thick. Probably didn't need a wet palette for it. But. That's alright. Bum, 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 bum. I move, I grab a bigger brush to pull it out of the pot so that I, my little brush isn't covered in paint. Bum, 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 bum. Balthazar gold is generally great at covering. So, what shall we put it on? Hmm. I think the little skull right here. little whatever that is right here. Um, and again on the same other side. Um, put it on the inner part of his muzzle. Or mouth. Muzzle. Kind of looks like a muzzle. That part? Uh, it's got leather too. Oh, well. Let's grab our leather cover then. And Add it to his little saddlebag here. And those little straps that he has on him. Gonna need another coat. I guess it's time to choose where we want to put our metallic green. Now, metallic green I use is actually premium paint from Vallejo, so I have to grab that. This metallic green to wherever we want the uh, power source to look like it's coming from. Very simple Oops. powery method. So, where do we want that? Ooh, power. Ooh, gosh. 
Oh, where's mine? I took it off. Bum, bum, bum. All right. Let's see, so over here, along these stripes, these stripes are all power sources on his backpack, and feels like the puppy should have some power source to him. So, well, I don't know if that's going to look good or not, but let's try out right in here. I did not need to put that on the wet palette, but it's done now. Um, yeah, we're gonna try right here. See if that looks good. Does it? Kind of like the darker part. Do I like that green power source here? Hmm. I have five more to paint. I'll figure out whether I like it that way or not. And let's see. I think these I oh, should be glowing power sources. Maybe. Boop, 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 boop. Now it'll look like it won't look like a puppy dog though. He'll just look like a bug. Alright, forget that. No. No no bug eyes. I have to grab the dura aluminum. Alright, and fix that. No bug eyes. How about um alright, so you're gonna be nice and power sourcey. He's got a power mall, so the power mall should have some power sourcey parts to it. I guess that will be should be on the handle or on the end. I think on the end just because I think that'll look better. Not necessarily for engineered reasons. I just think it'll look better. On the end. Hmm. Let's add a second layer of my Wreck Earth Flesh. It mean, looks like he's got a saddlebag there that I should make. That I should make brown. All right, let's make where's that? This little baggies brown. Alright, now let's zoom in to see what in the world I did. Just fixing up little details that I couldn't see by having the miniature on camera instead of so close to my face. Snap his robe. <whistles> One other little spot that might need to go green right here. I 
think I'm going to use more of this German gray and there's a wire that um, I guess emits some gas here and I think that should be rubber so I'm going to use my German gray just to make it rubber emitting whatever it is that they use to make fire don't want to go overboard with the colors I think that's starting to work out uh, we'll add a little bit of blue metallic blue from Vileo Premium we'll not put it on the white palette because it's not needed it being an airbrush paint and I only need it for a very small amount of time actually I probably didn't even need to um, pop this much out I guess I'll paint up the other guys while I'm at it so a little blue dot right there just because and here and here uh, yeah I'll do that after actually um, one thing I want to do now is Evil Sun Scarlet Lit on the Mephiston Red this is an air paint so I'm not gonna and I'm not going to be using much, so I won't bother to put it on the wet palette. And I am, as I said, not going to be using much. This is just highlight. Um, the very top. <laughs> just to make... This is like wet, uh, dry blending. But it's air, so it's um, more transparent. And yeah, it's just a pop out the Mephiston cover color by only adding it to things that are pointing upward. Yes, I should have done it while the and while I had not had the cold on, but I wasn't I was contemplating not doing it at all. I changed my mind, so better to do it with the gold on. On the other hand, I feel like the gold could probably use another layer anyway. There we go. I am not going to do anything to the rubber. Rubber is not very, it's not going to be very reflective, so I don't think it needs two different colors to signify it. No. Yeah, time to just do a bit of fix up while that dries. And see how I like it. Nearly done. So here he is with his two comrades. And when I was painting them all up, it kind of, I kind of figured out where I wanted the various uh, paints to go. I did get my Rackhearth flesh, so now he's properly painted in Rackhearth flesh on his robe. I changed the leather color to a two-color mix of XB88 and a Scrag Brown, which would have been similar to the three-color mix, but um, it requires two colors, not three. I will be fixing up the bottoms of the bases once I color, find a color match for that. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with how it turned out. Do let me know how you like them in the comments below. This shouldn't be a too complex color scheme as these guys are troops and I think this is as far as I would be going with them. Maybe I'd add a bit of highlighting to the leather, maybe I would add a little bit more variety in the metal, but I'm happy with them as they are. 
and now I'm going to get to play with them. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!